and a warm welcome to BBC Sports Africa and oh my, have we got a juicy package just for you. In this week's programme... Football is unarguably Africa's top sport, but basketball's fierce competition comes close. So in our big question, can basketball overtake football to become the continent's number one sport? South Africa's Wade Van Niekerk is living his dreams as Africa's track superstar. And I looked up to the screen and I saw it says world record and I was all shocked and I was like, what? You know, basketballers have swag for days. And we've got a feeling Drake would certainly be proud of Uganda's Emmanuel Mugenga's mime skills or not. You've got to be confident to play basketball at a certain level. Let's go Kenya, roared this boisterous fans who turn rugby grounds into a Kenyan fiesta. Welcome to Sports Africa. I'm Janine Anthony and this show is coming to you from Lagos and we're delving into a sport that made us belt I believe I can fly with more conviction than Michael Jordan with its hoops, the dunks, the pop culture that come with it, with its history makers and steady rise. Could we one day see basketball displace football on the continent to become Africa's favorite sport? Basketball. Fast-paced, energetic, intense, and at times completely mesmerizing. It's becoming more popular across Africa, with young people taking to courts across the continent, hoping to reenact the moves they see the pros make. Here in Nigeria, there's something of a renaissance. In 2012, the men's team qualified for the Olympic Games, and three years after, in 2015, they won the Afro Basket title, and that has led to the sport going from strength to strength. But they're not the only ones enjoying some success. The women's basketball team, also known as D-Tigers, will represent Africa at the World Championship later this year in Spain. Traditionally, they have, they've been more successful than the men's team. So for me, when I joined the national team, I wanted to emulate the success that the women have. Ikechuku Diogo played for several teams in the NBA, including the Golden State Warriors and Indiana Pacers, and is part of the success of the Nigerian men's basketball team. So that was the first ever Olympics Nigeria had ever made. And the way that we made it was uh, through the Olympic qualifying tournament, which was a tournament that no African country has ever won before. So I don't really think at the time we really knew the impact that it would have on the country. But that all led us back to 2015, which was the year we finally won uh, Nigeria's first uh, Nations Cup title in uh, Tunisia, which uh, automatically qualified us for the uh, 2016 Olympics. So pretty much since 2012, uh, Nigeria has just been making history uh, year after year after year on the basketball court, and it's only going to get better. But let's not get carried away just yet. Despite its successes in Nigeria and as most of Africa, it still lags a far way behind football on the continent. But could it one day maybe overtake football as Africa's favorite sport? At the moment, it has a lot going for it. Across the continent, the sport feels close to the culture of young urban Africa. There is also a growth in the number of those following the United States of America's NBA, a league which is three quarters black and includes some of the best talent from Africa. In fact, the same NBA is doing its fair share to increase its footprint on the continent. It's held clinics for young kids across Africa and is about to hold a third NBA Africa game on Saturday in South Africa involving NBA stars of African origin. It has also established an academy in Senegal. But not everyone is sure basketball is enjoying a growth in Africa. No way. So basketball has been around for the past 50, 60 years. Nigerian actually joined the FIBA basketball in about 54 years back. And we've been really doing extremely well from the 80s, from Akim Olajuwon, Shagode. And now, taking about 2000, 2001 and 2, African, being an Afro basket five times in the finals, uh, I, I, mean, I don't know where that one's coming from. Maybe right now with a big concession about the social media, media awareness, internet, new age media. So maybe you can see that right now. So, Oyedeji isn't exactly putting a dampener on things. He's only saying we shouldn't get carried away just yet. However, Hulo Chitunda, a basketball expert writer for the world governing body of basketball, FIBA, has said there's a lot to be optimistic about. There are many signs of development of basketball in Africa. We think about the number of African-born players uh, playing in top leagues around the world. We think about the NBA, the, 
Euro League, the FIBA uh, Champions League, for example. Uh, there are number, uh, this, uh, many, many African players uh, competing in those leagues. Uh, this past season, for example, uh, the NBA had 12 Af African born, born players. I mean, that, that's the best, the best sign, a good sign, how popular the game has become in Africa. To reach the heights of football, Africa's basketball leagues will no doubt have to borrow a leaf from the best league in the world, the NBA. But what can we learn from the Americans? Now we're providing the opportunity by starting with the younger generation so that we don't have to worry about in five to ten years that they missed the chance to play the game of basketball. So now we're pouring back into our community, our respective countries and the continent of Africa. Facilities, um, coaching, uh, infrastructure, uh, just ways of teaching the game, basketball camps, clinics, those are things that we're really trying to encourage to grow the game. So can we possibly dream of the day when basketball overtakes football in the hearts of African sports fans? As an ambassador of uh, basketball and uh, the game, I would say that yes, we will take over. Because our game doesn't ask so much space. It's only need a, a small place of the garage or the backyard and to put the open and you play basketball. I'm not sure if it's ever really going to overtake Soccer, just because, you know, soccer has been around since forever. And we love soccer. We love the Super Eagles. So I love the Super Eagles. But I think we can get to where we're neck and neck. So it seems as if the stars could be aligning for basketball in Africa. But a lot of work still needs to be done. Adequate funding needs to be found for, more infrastructure, and of course, player development. If all this can be harnessed, who knows, this might end up being the slam dunk that puts football into second place. The conversation has caught your attention. Here in Somaliland and Africa, we love football so much. Uh, the basketball is just for Chicago people. Uh, uh, football has, is being played even in the most vill uh, remote villages in Africa. So for basketball to come in and change that popularity would require a lot of investment, a lot of time for generations for that matter. Basketball cannot overcome football in Africa because playgrounds for football are available in Africa compared to playgrounds of basketball. Also, the ball that we use in playing football are easily made in by hand compared to how to make basketball balls. So that's why I think football is always the best in Africa. Time now for a Sports Quiz Amateur Expert. It's the competition where the bravest runs across the continent go head to head to be crowned our BBC Amateur Expert. And it's a Uganda edition this week. We cross over to our referee Celestine Karone in Kampala. Welcome to Amcha Expert. This week we'll be focusing on the Community Shield, athletics, rugby and tennis. Let's meet the contestants. Hi, my name is Ian Matanda. I'm a football coach and an all-round sports enthusiast. My name is Asha Kamgisha from the foothills of Mount Renzori. We've met the contestants. Now let's look at the rules for round one. Round one. It's simple. 30 seconds each to answer as many questions as possible on what's going on in the sporting week. Guys, are you ready? Yeah. Well, Ian, we will start with you. Your 30 seconds start now. Which club has won the most FA Community Shield titles? Manchester United. Correct. The North American bid for the 2026 World Cup included how many countries? Three. Name them, if you can. Mexico, Canada and United States. Correct. Which team won the 2016 Africa Senior Athletics Championships? Nigeria. South Africa. The winner of the CAF Champions League competes in the FIFA Club World Cup. True or false? True. Correct. At the Tour de France, what color jersey is awarded to the best yeah. young rider? Blue. Wrong. <laughs> White and your time is up. You did get three correct. Asha, let's see if you can do any better. Your time starts now. Which country hosted the 2016 Africa Senior Athletics Championships? Kenya, South Africa or Ethiopia? South Africa. Correct. What is the name of the Spanish coach who was fired on the eve of the World Cup? Yulen Lopetegui. Correct. Who was the first player to be signed by Unai Emery for Arsenal? Hmm. Nah. 
Stefan Lichsteiner. The most successful CAF Champions League club is Ali. How many titles have they won? Eight. What was, correct. What was the name of the 2018 FIFA World Cup ball? 2018? Yes. Tesla. Yes, correct. And your time is up. You did get four questions, right? Let's see what the scores look like. Iani, you're on a three points. Asha, you're on a four points. It is a tight contest. Remember, there are more rounds to come later in the program. There's breathtaking athletics and fascinating rugby stories still to come in the show. But first, there's one person we'd like you to meet. Big, check, strong, check. Doesn't like doing his laundry, double check. Introducing Ugandan basketball rock star, Imano Mugenga. I'll say James Harden. To follow your dream and work hard every single day. Doing my laundry, actually. I hate doing this. I'll pay for this. I'll say Monaco. Monaco is beautiful. I already have some nice superpowers. I don't need nothing. My shoe size is uh, 14. Look at this. This is the key to success, guys. iPhone all day. Should I say this? I'll say Tinder. I'll say Tyson. No, nothing, nothing crazy, really. Nothing crazy, no. People say I'm cocky, but I think it's more like confidence, you know? You gotta be confident to play basketball at a certain level. Drake. Tell you all my man that I'm sorry. I don't, I don't use perfume. I smell good all day. I'll say, in between the legs, crossover, just show me. And that's it. Brilliant. That's the end of part one. When we return, we'll meet the 400 meter star whose reality is, quite frankly, what dreams are made of. This is Sports Africa from the BBC.
Welcome back to the BBC's Sports Africa. This is a section of the program where we relieve some of the continent's biggest sports moments it has experienced. The event, the 400 meter final at the 2016 Rio Olympic Games. The athlete, Wade Van Niekerk. It's really a, a, a constant mental fight that you go through until the moment you get to the, the starting line and the gun goes and that's when all fear, all thoughts, all mindsets just disappear and you go out as hard as possible and get the job done you start thinking about the race and the reality of, of, of the fact that you've worked four years for this moment and doubt started creeping in and you start accepting a silver and then you start accepting a bronze and then before you know it, you're just grateful you're in the final. I think once you get to the starting lineup, it's really just about let, let, let it come, let it come, I need to run, I need to get this over and done with. Because it was the Olympic finals, I gave myself no other option but to make sure that I sprint as fast as possible from the beginning. So when the gun went off, uh, I left all doubts behind and I just let it be. And I went out as fast as possible because that's what I do best. That's one of my strengths. So I used that to my advantage and I said to myself, let's go out as hard as possible. So before I knew it, I was starting to approach the 200 meter line and, and, and that's when I kind of start breaking it off. So when I hit the, the 200 mark, I'll normally tell myself, now I'm in my comfort zone. So I'm not running 400 at all, I'm always just running 200 and 200. Running blind basically is just, I can't see anyone else unless someone catches me. So I was basically blind for most of the race. When it comes to lanes, you don't get too attached and you just take whatever lane you, you get as long as it's not lane one. <laughs> And I think at the last 50 meters, I started thinking to myself, okay, where's the competitors, where's the other guys? I've been alone for so long, I was expecting them to start um, pulling closer to me or, or so on. And as I crossed the finish line, I started looking to the side to, to see if, if someone might dip me or if someone might have caught up with me or anything. And I took the, a look to the, to the left and I saw there was no one and I looked up to the screen and I saw it says world record and I was all shocked and I was like what so that makes sense why there was no one next to me of his life the world record from lane number 8 it was definitely a special moment and also knowing that my family was right there to witness it uh, it gave me a lot of motivation and inspiration to actually go out to them as well right after that run and and just show them my love and respect for their support as a south african um wearing the green and gold has always been something that that we all always dreamt of uh, and uh, having that opportunity to stand on the podium as well uh, hearing the national anthem was uh, is always something that you always think of as a small kid loving sport I just want to be that shining light to each and every other person that has a dream and just to show them that anyone can, can achieve whatever dreams they have for themselves. I see accolades everywhere for Wade. Well done. Time for round two of Armchair Expert and it's back to Celestine in Kampala. After round one, Iano was on three points and Asha was on four points. Time for round two now. Let's see how it works. Round two, convince me. You each have 15 seconds to argue for or against. Two points are up for grabs. So guys, 15 seconds to convince me on this statement. Is the African Athletics Championships the best way of finding the continent's best athletes? Ian, you're arguing against and your time starts now. I think it's a good way, but I wouldn't say it's the best way because you have the Commonwealth, you have the Olympics, and more importantly, you have the Junior Championships. And I think if you have Junior Championships and you, talent, you get the talent much earlier, you have more time to nurture them. So if you want to find players, find athletes, get them early, get them on course, put them in good facilities, and ah. then they'll proceed to the next <laughs> stage. Time is up. You did have quite a number of points, Asha. You've heard his arguments. Your time to convince me starts now. 
Well, it is called the Africa Athletics Championships, so definitely that's really the only way we should uh, have uh, the best uh, from the continent uh, because uh, you have everyone from around the continent uh, traveling to maybe one location and that's the only way you can get people to uh, come against each other. That's how I see it. Yeah, time is up. Yeah, time is up. And those were quite very interesting arguments and I felt like you did give me many points, so I think, Ian, you get the two points. <laughs> it is, it is a, not the best, but it is a good way. Well, let us see how the scores stand after this round. Well, after this round, Ian is on five points and Asha is on four points. It is a one-point competition, so we will be back later in the program with round three. Now, Kenya may have disappointed at the recent Rugby World Cup 7s in San Francisco, but the team and fans have been highly commended for the carnival atmosphere they brought to each of the 10 venues of the World Series. But how do they manage to do it all? BBC Sport Africa followed the team when they played in London not so long ago. Passion, that's what we bring. Of course we are the best, we are unique, yeah? we've got extra energy, that's where we stand out. It's awesome, it's fantastic, it's great seeing all these Kenyans, I love the ambience. It's great seeing, you know, just everyone shouting, let's go Kenya, it's fantastic, I'm loving it. You find that Kenyans will coordinate on social media and they will speak to each other and say, where are we sitting? And we'll all sit together and it's like, let's go Kenya, let's go. We love it when the Kenyans come to the tournaments. They really do add a lot to it in terms of the atmosphere uh, and the support. I think the fans have really supported this team and uh, I think that's the support that they're giving the team and the boys. You really feel at home, you really feel uh, motivated to play. And just playing, I mean, when you go, when you travel and playing among your local crowd, it's, it's always an amazing feeling. I mean, we're here, we're dressed for it. We love our country, we love rugby and we're very proud of the Sevens team. You just need to turn up Hello? and when you turn up, Both? like, people see your colours. Hey, Abari, Mzuri, you know? We meet each other, like, for the first time and it's so good. You hear them and they can drown out the Fijian fans when they get going. It's such a fabulous atmosphere. Let's go Kenya, let's go! <laughs> One of the events where we have a great uh, impact on the tournament from the Kenyans is, is of course Cape Town. And in some of the games even take over the stadium more so than, than the South Africans. When your fans get behind you and you hear, let's go Kenya, let's go, it lifts you up. It gives you that extra oomph. It makes you want to just make that next tackle, make that next try, because it matters not only to you as a player, but to the fans as well. They're just them supporting uh, the team, coming there, cheering the squad, really gives the boys a little bit of morale boost. Wakari Bishwa. Kenya yetu, hakuna matata. We come here and expand our network. We come here and create friendship. I have people I have met here last year. We are still friends and we meet regularly. So this year I have made new friends and hopefully we'll be in touch. Before we go, who's going to rock this big yellow throne in Kampala? We switch over for the final round of Armchair Expert and our referee Celestine in Kampala. Crunch time on Armchair Expert. Ian is on five points. Asha is on four points after two rounds. Let's see the rules for the third round. Round three, the quick fire decider. 45 seconds to push up your score. Remember, shout your name before you answer or you lose out. Remember guys, shout your name. Your 45 seconds starts now. Who are the African T20 women cricket champions? Asha, Uganda. Yes, correct. The Community Shield is played between Premier League and Champions League winners. True or false? Asha, false. Correct. Luvo Manyonga competes in which field event? Long jump or high jump? Asha, long jump. Correct. In cricket, what does ODI stand for? Ian, yeah. one day international. Correct. Who are the reigning women hockey world champions? Asha, Hungary. Wrong, Netherlands. 
1986 FIFA World Cup was held in Mexico. Where was it supposed to be held? Originally? Yeah, in Colombia. Correct. The American basketball teams, teams the Bulls represents which city? Yeah, in Chicago. Correct. Which famous footballer is known as Edson Arante? Ian Pele. Correct. And time is up. Come well, on. that was very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> that was crazy. <laughs> um, let's see the scores after that round. Well, and that means Asha is on seven points and Ian is on nine points. It has been a very close competition. Ian is this week's Amcha Expert winner. Welcome to the throne. <laughs> Asha. <laughs> You should have let her have a feel for it. It's true, I could have. Con congratulations, how does it feel? Thank you very much. But it feels it feels right. It feels like this is this is where this is where I belong. They will have their arguments, but do remember you could always join us again next time for Armchair Expert. Big congratulations to you, and this week's winner. Don't forget you can get in touch with anything you've seen in this program via Facebook or Twitter, or head over to our website, BBC Sports Africa. That's where you can see some of these pieces again, features, latest stories, anything, you can catch it there. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Janine Anthony, signing out from Lagos State. Goodbye, guys.